Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to move on to the next keynote for today, which is on marketing continuity, digital trends for strengthening brand engagement in a remote world by Sabrina Prince, EVP, Group Management Director, FCB Health Global. Well, with, fifth, uh, with 20 plus years in healthcare marketing, including research, public health relations and advertising, Sabrina is a strategist who's able to identify pivotal customer insights and impact customer behavior to drive revenue. As the EVP at FCB Health Europe, uh, Sabrina is an empathetic leader and a mentor and champions diversity and inclusion. Her passion is helping small business owners recognize their brand essence and cultivate marketing strategies to expand customer loyalty. Thank you so much, Sabrina, for joining us today and being a part of our wonderful summit today. It's an honor having you. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. It's a pleasure being with you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, absolutely fine. So with this, Sabrina, I hand it over to you. Thank you for joining. Perfect. Thank you so much. And if you can share the presentation. Sure, I'll get the team to do that. Could we have a presentation? Yes, right there, over to you. Awesome. So uh, amazing speakers that we've had thus far uh, talking a lot about brand engagement and their strategies and empathy. Uh, my presentation may be a, a bit more, more educational and applied in focus. Um, obviously, as you know, the theme is digital trends for strengthening brand engagement in a remote world. But really what I wanna focus in uh, on specifically is the importance of custo customer platform, uh, customer, next slide, customer customer data platforms. Next slide, please. Could we have- It's not a moving forward for me. Yeah, yeah, just a second, Sabrina. No worries. Over to you. There we go, cool. All right, so again, focusing on the importance of customer data platforms. So to frame our conversation, next slide, I'd like to uh, take us a year back to the beginning of the pandemic, which I know may not be a place we all want to go to, but this was um, an interesting uh, survey by Statistica on the online behavior of consumers in the US around that March, 2020 timeframe. Um, and the website of Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, cdc.gov, was the most popular governmental web domain in the US in March, 2020, with almost 432 million digital visits. The majority of the American population considers the CDC the most trustworthy source of information on COVID-19. CDC.gov recorded over 934 million page views in that month alone. In stark contrast, social media was considered the least trustworthy source of information on the coronavirus outbreak, according to the same March survey. So, what does this tell us? I mean, the unfortunate truth is that we live in a world of information overload and of mistrust of politicians, sometimes scientists, and on occasion, each other. And this reality has forced internet users um, to cut out the middleman and really turn directly to the source. And this places a big responsibility on healthcare marketers to be a resource for unbiased information providing that unbiased information in a way that is um, authentic to the consumer, as you've heard from the previous speakers, relies heavily on security and the integrity of the data that the marketing team is able to, to consume and collect. Next slide. Obviously, we know that delivering the best customer experience is a core goal for most companies. Um, and in order to do so, we need to understand and collect data about our customers and how they interact with our promotional materials. Our clients, you, uh, marketers, may be using a variety of digital platforms to capture these customer interactions like Google Analytics for websites or Adobe Analytics for any sort of customer campaigns you may have or for specific HCP to rep interactions we may be collecting that in Salesforce. All of this makes complete sense, but what this does and what this data, um, uh, what, what this results in is that the data is collected in silos of information. And these silos limit the, the cohesive understanding of the customer. Next slide. That's where the concept of connected data comes in. 
Next slide. So in order to own the data and to ensure that we can deliver data informed and solution driver, driven user experiences, it's really important for marketers to be able to manage and activate or act on that data in real time. And this is where a customer data platform or CDP helps to improve this engagement and those conversations. So what do I mean when I'm referring to a CDP? Essentially, a CDP is a single dashboard where all data, all tagged data, all identifiable tagged data, so information about your customer that you can get down to an identifiable level on is captured across all the brand's digital properties and it can be managed and segmented and inform any customer insights. So this is a, an example of just a mocked up CDP customer data platform. And you can kind of consider this, this diagram instead of a, a line, more of a loop. But on the left, you'll see the, the inputs, those digital platforms that are collecting data from websites, any customer relationship programs, any you know, HCP rep uh, engagements that are happening and feeding in the data into the centralized CDP platform. The beauty of a customer data platform is that we can collect that online data information, but also any offline information that is occurring from events when we get back to live events or any sort of segmentation or market research or surveys that currently exist that create more of a comprehensive picture of the customer. And what this does or what a CDP does is, is bring together all of that information from the disparate sources in a format that is um, easily digestible, actionable by the marketing team so that they can collect it, it's standardized, they can learn about what the customer is doing, why the customer is doing it, and determine the best way to act on that, push that information back out for any um, lead generation or whatever the overall brand strategies are. Next slide. So why is this so important? You know, why should you care? Obviously, today's customers are assuming that your company knows them, that they remember them, that you know who they are, you know what they've done, you know what they want. Basically, that you can read their mind. They're having this sort of experience that feels authentic and almost like prescient by brands that aren't healthcare brands. They want to be loved. Um, they expect the marketing company to serve relevant content based on their experiences, based on data. Um, and marketers and marketing technologists know that gathering this data, acting on it in a unified way isn't easy. And we also know that internally, only a few companies have done this successfully. The rest of them, probably you, your clients, are battling with technology, strategies, budgets, organizations, staff skills, and a host of other obstacles to success. But customers don't really care about any of these issues. If you don't give them what they want, next slide, it's game over. They'll assume that you don't care about them, don't understand them, and they'll take their business to somebody else, to the competitor who they believe will treat them better. And it doesn't matter whether the competition or the other firms actually do treat them better or not. The fact is, once you've lost them, you'll have to fight twice as hard to get them back. And it's therefore not a surprise that delivering this unified, love-inducing, brand-inducing, brand-loyal customer experience is one of the highest priorities for marketers. I'm probably preaching to the choir, I know. Next slide. So you're like, okay, yes, Sabrina, I agree. I want my customers to love me. Where do I begin? Next slide. So as I mentioned, you know, a unified customer experience is impossible without unified customer data. Most data, as I mentioned before, originates in separate systems that weren't designed to share it with anything else. Traditional methods for collecting data into unified customer profiles like enterprise data warehouse have failed to solve this problem. Newer approaches like data lakes have collected the data into like 
a big lake, but they fail to organize it effectively in a way that marketers can act on it. Um, a CDP is an alternative approach that has had great success at, at pioneering companies, and it puts marketers in direct control of the data unification. Um, it helps them to ensure that it's focused directly on their marketing goals, marketing requirements, and CDPs specifically um, apply specialized technologies and pre-built processes that are tailored to, to meet marketing data needs, to customize the information in a way that's actionable for marketing. Um, and this essentially allows them for faster, more efficient solutions um, than any general purpose technologies. We know how important it is in this evolving landscape to be able to understand what our customers are doing and react on the dime. And CDPs assist in that process. Next slide. So I've listed here just five CDPs that as, a, as an agency we've worked with, with clients. I don't expect you to read these all, um, Segment, Exponia, List Tract, Imarsis, Telium, they'll be in, in the, the wrap up and the handout. But these are um, CDP solutions that we found to be um, successful in really combining the data analytics, um, the platform in a way that is digestible with this unified view that allows marketers to really be able to understand and bring together their wealth of information online and offline to action in a real time manner um, for their, their customers. So again, take a, a look at these um, at your leisure if this is an area that you're interested in exploring. Next slide. So okay, you've hopefully figured out that you wanna try using a customer data platform. Um, you've got your technology together. Now you're ready to create this unified customer experience. So, you know, diagram on the, the left is really just showing you a, a, a mock-up of what that would be. But on the right, I've listed four typical process questions that you would like to tackle as you're undertaking this effort. Um, first, develop and align on your data strategy. Do you know who you're targeting? What do you need to know if you don't know that? Is there additional research that's needed? What's the behavior that you're trying to change in this customer along the customer journey, whether it's acquisition or trial or loyalty? Do you want them to tweet? What is that? Try to pen that down. And then determine your content strategy. Uh, speakers before were talking about their, the amazing way that they've been using their content to motivate patients uh, over over the, the pandemic. Figuring out what your messages are, knowing your content strategy is imperative to be able to, to turn that information out to the customer based on uh, their actions. I'm gonna give you an example of how you can determine that content strategy soon to come. Um, now, assuming you've got your content strategy, it's really important to be able to be responsive. And the best way to do that is to leverage template-driven creative so not recreating the wheel every time you need to communicate to your customer, whether it's on banners or posters, online or offline, but having that in a templated manner so that you can pick customer A, behavior B, message C, and organize it, get it out the door. And extremely important to constantly integrate analytics at every touch point, because unless you know the results of those efforts, we don't know how to improve, maximize, or change um, our strategies. Next slide. So this is just an example of, of being able to implement this that we've done for, for a brand, one of our clients, and their focus was really on leveraging uh, data relevance to drive trial for these HCPs. And you see, of course, how They've used websites as the really foundational resource for information and uh, you know, pushing the physician to prescribe that sort of the action that is desired in that medium um, for more long form messages, more in-depth information about dosing or anything that's related to safety. Usually that's delivered in any sort of email or direct mail campaign. Um, but also how that could work on digital displays, whether it's virtual or live con congress congresses or conferences. Um, next slide.
then you can see, of course, how you could expand this to all of your customer groups. So this is just an example of a, a ecosystem, multi-channel ecosystem where we've uh, created that, that world of cus customer experience for the physician, a similar complementary world for the patient based on uh, the, the experiences and drivers that we know they're going to interact with. And knowing what our content will be for the physician, what the content will be for the patient, the marketer has the opportunity to create like a, a, a universe where when that conversation happens, they're both speaking the same language um, and it is the most productive leading to the treatment of that particular disease or prescription of their medication. Next slide. So uh, you've got your, your assets, you've got your CDP, and um, you know your customers, you know how to reach them. What do you say? We talked about content strategy. And this is just an example just a, of, of a content workshop that we hold for clients often that really is focused on ensuring that all the messages across all your tactics um, within a specific tactic are working to achieve the, the goals that are aligned to your brand strategy. So a way this could work is that you could bring again together um, an assortment of uh, participants, whether they're medical people, uh, marketing people, consumers, um, people who know your message, your messaging, prioritize the audiences um, your customer audiences based on the impact that you think you can make with our messages and really group those messages um, based on the ones that we feel can, can drive or move our customer towards the desired outcome. And what you end up with is like a matrix that kind of outlines the barriers that exist with your customer and the specific messages that would be needed to change uh, that behavior. So, Again, would love to talk through how this could work with you in the future, but doing something like a content workshop or a card sorting workshop is actually what we call this, where you get all your messages onto cards, prioritize, identify the customer, is really a great way of aligning on your content strategy uh, so that you can be nimble um, with your messaging across all of the various platforms or channels that are part of your, your marketing uh, mix. Next slide. I talked about templated communications. Um, developing templated communications really allows you to cadence those messages that you've prioritized when you did your content card sorting uh, workshop. Um, so you can cadence them by segment. And this is what really allows you to create that experience for the customer that feels dynamic. Um, I'm on a website and I'm, I'm reading certain information and then I move to another channel and I'm getting a similar information. It seems like the brand is following me. They understand me. They, they know my pivot points. All of this can be actioned in a way that feels uh, intuitive to the customer when you, you can template out um, these, these communication uh, uh, vehicles. In this example, it's for a banner. Next slide. So I threw a lot at you real fast, um, but really um, focusing on customer data platforms and bringing the power into the hands of the marketing team, aggregating that information and that data that is in-house, offline and online, putting it in a singular dashboard place so that you can understand and contextualize it and drive better decision-making for your customers. So as thrown a lot at you as it relates to customer data platforms and um, the, the strategies needed to integrate them, but, but all those things aside, as you wanna consider this or whether you, you're currently using CDPs, um, here are some questions to consider on how you can further create this, this uh, unified um, intuitive customer experience. One, what would a personalized experience feel like for your customer? So certainly we know as marketers, it's really important for us to put ourselves in the, the seat of our customer um, and we know that they wanna be loved. So in what ways can we, can we demonstrate that? What would that feel like from the brand? Um, what do I need to know about them or need to know to create this experience? So perhaps a little bit more market research might be needed for you to be able to answer that question. Um, do I have the right data? 
either uh, like insight or channel or behavioral data to deliver on this? What technology do I have in place today? And what do I need? So we can always start with where we are today and then build to, so just to close a few questions to consider as you're delivering your uh, unified customer experience. What would a personalized experience be like for your customer? What do you need to know about them in order to create this experience? Do you have the right data? Do you need additional uh, market research to be able to inform this decision? What technology do you have in place today? And what do you need? You know, Start where you are today and build towards a more robust uh, offering. How can you start small? What is the one additional thing you can do to create that personalized experience? I think if you ask yourselves those questions in a rigorous manner, you'll be able to move toward creating that loved uh, sort of comprehensive customer experience that we know our customers crave, even though you're in healthcare. So that's my presentation. Thank you for being good students. Now I have some examples of some creative work just to ramp up your energy level again. Next slide. It's a video. So this is for Accord, the biggest pharma company you've never heard of. Enjoy the video that's coming up next. This is a case study from Accord. You know, Accord, the biggest supplier of medicines to the NHS. Surely you've heard of us. We make a fifth of all generics used in the UK. Come on. We make 4.3 billion pills a year. We're in one in three homes. You've probably, definitely taken one of our pills. You must have seen our name. It's on factories up and down the country. And on thousands of lorries. It's on lab coats. Name badges? <sighs> we get this a lot. So we've made a new campaign. Introducing the biggest generics company no one's heard of. And we made some bright orange ads. And we gave them some wiggly headlines. Telling it like it is. That it doesn't matter if no one knows who we are. It won't stop us doing amazing things for the nation's health. And we made a lot of them too. So there's no way you'll forget our name. <sighs> it's a chord. Thank you, Bhavna. And we have one more for Bear Healthcare. This was uh, Bear Healthcare, as uh, a client of ours, and um, have many uh, contraceptive uh, devices for women. And this was their celebration, 60th anniversary uh, celebration of the contraceptive pill. And if you go to the next one, that's also the video. Thank you all. Next slide. Learn about a revolutionary approach to family planning, including not only spacing of children, but also new hope for the childless through a remarkable new pill. Since the pill's launch, we've seen it transform women's lives around the world. So Bio wanted to create a campaign to celebrate not only 60 years of the pill, but what the pill means for women today. The pill. You know, the pill. Just two unremarkable words. But 60 years ago, it changed the world in a remarkable way. Supporting women to have children by choice, not chance. It helped us pursue our own ambitions and take on the world. It empowered us to reach for new heights. Support the children we have and strive for lives free from hardship. To shape our own futures and to shape others. And to live our lives our way. 60 years ago, a world of opportunity started with the pill. Since then, Bayer has been bringing women benefits in contraception and beyond and continue to innovate decade after decade. All that started with just one little pill. Celebrating 60 years of empowering women. 
Bayer, your partner in women's health. The campaign rolled out across social media, digital and print materials. 60 years of independence, opportunity and freedom. All that started from just one little pill. Thank you, Bhavna. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Sabrina, for joining us.